Hi again, everyone. Welcome back to College Algebra. Today we're in section 2.3 and we're going to be talking about functions. And I'm going to show you the difference between a relation and a function. So we'll talk about those definitions. And I'll show you how to determine a function's domain and range. I'll show you how to use function notation. And then we'll talk about how to determine where a function is increasing or decreasing or constant. So let's go ahead and get started. So our first definition is that a relation is any set of ordered pairs. A relation is any set of ordered pairs. And a function is a relation in which each input matches only one output. In other words, each x value matches up with only one y value. So here in example one, it says decide whether each relation defines a function. So all we have to do for each relation is make sure that each x value only matches with one y value. So here I have the x value one, and that matches a two, and I don't have the x value of one anywhere else. And here I have the x value negative two, and that matches a four, and negative two does not match up with any other y values. And then here we have the x value three, and that also matches a four. Now a lot of times it bothers students that we have the y value repeated, but remember the definition only requires that each x value matches only one y value. And so each of these x values, the one and the negative two and the three, they only match up with one y value, so f is a function. Now when we look at relation g, the first thing we see is that the x value of one matches a y value of one. But then we see that the x value of one also matches a y value of two, and it also matches a y value of three. So for this reason, the relation g is not going to be a function. Now look at relation h. So here we have the x value of negative four, and that matches a one, and the x value negative four is not reused anywhere, but the x value negative two is used twice. The x value negative two matches a one, it also matches a zero. So this is going to keep h from being a function. So h is not a function. Now here is just an alternate way of representing a relation. Instead of listing the ordered pairs, sometimes you'll see the x values in one circle and the y values in another circle, and you'll see an arrow drawn from each x value to the y values that it matches. So let's think about whether f would be a function or not. So here the x value of one matches a y value of two, and that's the only y value it matches. The x value negative two matches the y value of four, and that's the only y value that it matches. And the x value three matches a four, but it only matches one number. So again, f is a function. This is the same f that we looked at on the last slide where we had the ordered pairs written out. And then here we have function h. So notice that the negative four only matches a one, but notice that the negative two matches two different y values, so this is not a function. Now let's talk about domain and range. These are not really difficult concepts to understand, although it does take some practice to get good at determining the domain and the range based on the situation that you're in. But really, domain is just the set of all x values that can be plugged into a relation that will give you a valid y value. So the domain is the set of all the valid x values, and the range is just the set of all the y values that you can get from that relation. So again, domain is the x values, and range is the y values. So let's look at example two together, and the instructions say give the domain and range of each relation, and tell whether that relation defines a function. So in part A, we have just a list of ordered pairs, and we know this is a relation. Let's see if we can list the domain. The domain is just the set of all the x values. Now, whenever you have an x value that occurs twice, like we do here, you should not list that x value twice. You should only list each x value once. So the domain for this relation is going to be three and four and six. And the range for this relation is going to be negative one and two and five and eight. 
and we put those numbers in a set of curly braces because that's the set notation. So the curly braces you can think of kind of like a Walmart bag or something. So it's just a container that holds all the things that you want to put in that bag. And the domain is the set, three, four, six. The range is the set, one, two, five, eight. And we would say this is not a function because the x value of four is being matched to two different y values. So this is not a function. Now let's look at relation B. And here we have that mapping notation that we talked about earlier. So in the first ring, we have all the x values. And in the second ring, we have all the y values. And the arrows show us which x value matches with which y value. So the x value of 4 matches a y value of 100. The x value 6 matches a y value 200. 7 also matches a y value of 200. And negative 3 matches a y value of 300. So the domain for this relation is going to be 4, 6, 7, negative 3. And the range for this relation is going to be 100, 200, 300. Now is this a function? And the answer is yes because each x value that we have is only mapping to one y value. So we would say this is a function. And here we have relation C, and this one is written in a table format. So you can see that an x value of negative five matches a y value of two, an x value of zero also matches a y value of two, and an x value of five matches a y value of two. So the domain is going to be the set of all the x values. So the domain will be negative 5, 0, and 5. The range is going to be the set of all the y values, and we only have one y value, so the range is 2. And the question now is, is this a function? And we would say, yes, this is a function because each x value only matches to one y value. Now, a lot of times we don't have a list of ordered pairs or the mapping notation that we saw earlier. A lot of times we have a graph. And so it's nice to have a way to look at the graph and quickly know whether you're dealing with a function or not. And so we have the vertical line test. If every vertical line intersects the graph of a relation in no more than one point, then that relation is a function. Let's see what we mean by that. So the instructions on this example say give the domain and range of each relation and use the vertical line test to determine if the graph represents a function. So the relation that you see here in part A consists of just these four points. We have negative 1 comma 1, 0 comma negative 1, 1 comma 2, and 4 comma negative 3. Let's go ahead and list the domain and the range first. So remember, the domain is just the set of all the x values, and they don't have to be in any particular order. I'm going to list the domain here as negative 1, comma 0, comma 1, comma 4. But again, the order does not matter. And the range for this relation will be 1, negative 1, 2, and negative 3. Now let's use the vertical line test to determine if any vertical line can be drawn that will intersect the relation more than once. So if I draw a vertical line through this first point, you can see that it only touches the relation at that one point. And if I draw a vertical line here, same thing. And if I draw one here, same thing. And for the fourth one, same thing. So there is no vertical line that will touch two points in our relation. So we can say that this is a function. In part B, our graph is an ellipse. And we actually have an infinite number of points that are part of this graph. So instead of trying to list all the points that are in the domain or all the points that are in the range, what we'll do is we'll use interval notation instead. You remember interval notation from section 1.7. Now again, the domain includes all the x values from the furthest left to the furthest right. So I'm going to say that our domain is all the x values from negative 4 to positive 4. Notice that the graph exists at every possible x value between those two numbers. So we're going to say that the domain is bracket negative 4, comma 4, bracket. The brackets, again, indicate 
that there really are points on our graph where the x value equals negative 4 and where the x value equals 4. So remember the brackets show that we are including these two numbers in the domain. And then the range, remember, is the set of all the y values. But again, there are too many y values to list. So what we'll do is write an interval that includes all the y values. So we'll go from the lowest y value to the highest y value. And we'll say that the range includes all the y values from negative 6 up to positive 6. One mistake that I see students make a lot is they forget that range needs to be in terms of the y values. So most students would pick out this as the lowest point and this as the highest point, and of course that is correct. But when you state the range, you wouldn't want to say 0 to 0 because that doesn't tell you anything about how low or how high. You, when you do the range, you've got to state it in terms of y values. So the lowest y is negative 6 and the highest y is positive 6. Now let's use the vertical line test to determine whether this relation is a function. And if we draw just one vertical line, you can see that this vertical line touches the graph in two places, up here and down here. And what that tells you is that there are x values that are matching two different y values. So the x value of 1, for example, is matching this positive y value and it's also matching this negative y value. So this is not a function. And in part C, our graph is a straight line. And you can see that this line continues forever to the left and forever to the right. So the domain for this line would be negative infinity to positive infinity. Remember, domain is all the possible x values. And then the range is all the possible y values. So this line is continuing up forever and also continuing down forever. And so we would say that the range is negative infinity to positive infinity as well. Now, any vertical line that you draw is only going to intersect that line at one point. So there are no x values that are being repeated in this graph. And therefore, this graph does represent a function. And here in Part D, we have this graph that curves. This is actually a parabola, and we'll talk more about those in a later chapter. But let's first talk about this relation's domain and range. So you can see that this graph continues forever to the left, and it also continues forever to the right. So the domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is the lowest y value to the highest y value. Now the lowest y value that this graph is ever going to reach is going to be y equals negative 3. And then the highest y value is positive infinity because this graph continues upward forever. So we're going to say that the range for this relation is bracket negative 3 to infinity. And now we want to ask, is this a function? And if you imagine drawing a vertical line on this graph, any vertical line you draw is only going to intersect the graph at one point. So we would say this is a function. Now in the last example, you saw how to determine the domain and range of a function or a relation when you're looking at the graph. Now we're going to talk about how to determine the domain and range when you're looking at the equation. So let's just set down an agreement about domain. In general, the domain of a function defined by an algebraic expression is all real numbers except any numbers that cause us to divide by zero because division by zero is not possible or lead to an even root of a negative number. So in other words, you can assume that the domain of an algebraic expression is all real numbers unless you have x values that are going to cause a denominator to equal zero or x values that are going to cause a negative under an even root radical. Any x values that cause either of these problems, we will leave out of the domain. So for a polynomial, the domain is always going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Because in a polynomial, any x value can be plugged in, and you won't have any radicals or denominators that you have to worry about. With an even root function, so like a square root or a fourth root, something like that, 
we will have to leave out any x values that cause us to try to take the square root of a negative. So to find the domain of an even root function, what we'll do is take the expression under the radical, which we call the radicand, take the radicand and find out what x values cause that to be either greater than zero or equal to zero. And those values will be the domain of the function. So in other words, the domain of an even root function is all the numbers except those that make the radicand negative. For rational functions, remember we want to leave out of the domain any values that would cause us to divide by zero. So we want to leave out of the domain any values that cause the denominator to equal zero because the denominator is what you're dividing by. So to find the domain of a rational function where there are variables in the denominator, find out what x values make that denominator equal zero and then leave those values out of the domain. So in other words, the domain is all numbers except whatever makes the denominator equal zero. So in example five, we're going to determine whether each of these relations defines a function, and we're also going to determine the domain and the range. Now in part A, we have y equals x plus four. So first let's decide if this is a function or just a relation. Now remember the definition of a function is that each x value can only match up with one y value. In other words, each x value should only produce one y value when we plug it in. Now, any number you plug in for x, you're going to add four to it, and that's gonna give you one answer. So each x you plug in is gonna calculate one y value. So this is definitely a function. In fact, we haven't gotten to graphing yet, but when we do, you'll see that an equation like this is going to graph a straight line. So of course this is a function because it would pass the vertical line test. Now let's talk about the domain and the range. Now remember, domain is the set of all the x values that can be plugged into a function, and range is the set of all the y values that will be output from that function. So think about this. Is there any number that you could not plug in for x? The answer is no. Any number you can think of can be plugged in for x. So the domain of this function is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. And now we want to think about the range. And this does take a little more imagination, so don't be too upset with yourself if it doesn't come to you right away. This is a pretty abstract concept that we're dealing with here. But always remember that on a graph, range is the lowest y value to the highest y value. So what we want to think about is, what is the lowest y value that we could possibly get from this expression? Well, the smaller number we plug in for x, the lower the y value is going to be. And we can make y as low as we want it to be by choosing an appropriate x. And we can also make y as big as we want it to be by choosing an appropriate x. So the range of this function is negative infinity to positive infinity. And now let's look at the relation in part b. Here we have y equals the square root of 2x minus 1. And again, let's decide if this represents a function or not. So again, to determine if this is a function, we want to think about what happens when we plug in a number for x. If you plug in any number for x, you're going to multiply that number by 2, and then you're going to subtract 1. And then whatever you have at the end of that calculation, you're going to do the square root of that, and that's going to give you one y answer. So each x only allows you to calculate one y value, and so this is a function. And now let's think about domain. So remember that when we have a radical, we can't allow x to be anything that causes this expression under the radical to become negative. So we have to make sure that this expression under the radical either stays greater than or equal to zero. So I need to find out what x values cause 2x minus 1 to be greater than or equal to zero, and those will be the x values that are part of my domain. So to solve this, you know you add 1 to both sides and you divide both sides by 2, and we find out that any x that's greater than or equal to 1 half 
will give us an answer under the radical that's either zero or more. So the domain is all the numbers from one half up. Here is a little number line graph of that. So the x's that are greater than or equal to one half are all the numbers to the right of one half. And I just drew this to help you get the interval notation. So in interval notation, we would say the domain of this function is from one half to infinity. So bracket one half comma infinity. Now for the range, again, you have to use your imagination a little bit. So look at this expression under the radical, 2x minus 1. You'll probably notice that the bigger number I plug in for x, the bigger my answer under the radical is going to be, and then the bigger the square root will be. So every time I choose a bigger x, I get out a bigger y. And what's the smallest x I can plug in? The smallest x we can plug in is 1 half. And if we plug in 1 half, of course, 2 times 1 half minus 1 is going to be 0. And the square root of 0 is 0. So the smallest y value we can get from this function is 0. And then any bigger x we plug in is going to allow us to get a bigger y. So we can make y as big as we want by choosing an appropriate x. But the smallest we can make y is 0. So the range is going to need to be 0 to infinity. Now here on part C, we have y squared equals x. And this one is a little different from the two we looked at before because this one is not solved for y. But that's okay. Let's just use our common sense and figure out if this can be a function or not. And then we'll talk about the domain and the range. So remember, this represents a function if each x only matches one y. Now in this case, we have y squared equals x. So in this case, we're not actually plugging in x values like we did before. In this case, you would plug in y values and calculate an x. But in order for this to be a function, we need to make sure that each x value only matches one y value. Now remember, this is squared. And also remember that when you square a negative number, you get a positive. So just think about plugging in any number and then plugging in its opposite. Let's take negative 2, for example. If I plug in negative 2, negative 2 squared is going to give me 4 for x. But if I plug in positive 2, positive 2 squared is also going to give me 4. So here I have an example where an x is matching up with two different y values. 4 comma negative 2 and 4 comma positive 2 are both solutions to this equation, and so that's going to keep this from being a function because one x value matches up with two different y values. Now let's talk about how to find domain and range. So again, think about our relation. We have y squared equals x, and we know that the domain is the set of all the x values. Now think about the left side of this equation here. We have y squared. So no matter what you plug in for y, you're going to square it, and then it's going to be either 0 if you plugged in 0, or it's going to turn out positive because any number times itself makes a positive. So x can never be negative. And that means that the domain of this function is just numbers from 0 up. So the domain is going to be from 0 to infinity. So bracket 0, comma infinity. We use a bracket because I can get an x value of 0 if I just plug in a y of 0. All right, now, what about the range? Well, the range is all the y values. Usually that's the output, but in this case, because this equation is not solved for y, in this case, y is actually the input. But notice that any number can be squared, so any number can be plugged in for y, and therefore the range of this relation is negative infinity to positive infinity. Now let's look at part E. Here we have y equals 5 divided by x minus 1. And let's think about whether this is a relation or a function. Well, again, each x you plug in, you're going to subtract 1 from it, and then you're going to do 5 divided by that difference, and that's going to be your y value. And that's only going to be one y value each time. Every different x you plug in, is going to give you one y value. So this is a function. And now let's talk about the domain. 
Well, we have a denominator here, and we know that we can't allow x to be anything that would cause this denominator to equal zero. So I'm going to write actually an inequality. I'm going to write that x minus 1 cannot be zero. So if I solve this and I add 1 to both sides, I find out that x cannot equal 1. So in other words, the domain is all numbers except 1. Now what would that look like on a number line? If I put 1 on my number line, the domain is all the numbers that are less than 1 and all the numbers that are more than 1. It's just not 1 itself. So I need to exclude that 1. That's going to take two intervals. So my domain needs to be all the numbers from negative infinity to 1, parentheses, union, all the numbers from 1 to infinity. So you see how we wrote it there in interval notation. Now let's think about range. And I know that this is a really abstract thing for you right now, but just follow with me here. And the more you think about this, the better it will sink in, I think. Now for the range, we're trying to figure out what possible values could we get out for y. Well, you can get out almost any number you want for y by plugging in an appropriate x. I can get out any positive or negative decimal or whole number by plugging in the right number for x. If I plug in a fractional x, it will give me a fractional denominator and then 5 divided by that fraction can make just about any number you want. The only number I can't get here is I can never get 0. Because in order for this fraction to represent 0, the top would have to be 0. But notice there's no variable in the top. And therefore, there is no way for me to get y to equal 0. So the range is going to be every number except 0. And you could draw a number line similar to this one, but the way to write every number except zero in interval notation is to say that the range is all the numbers from negative infinity to zero, parentheses, union, parentheses, zero to infinity. So you see how this notation leaves out the number zero itself. And again, the reason we need to leave out zero is because there's no way to make this fraction equals zero because there's no way to get zero in the top. Now here are a couple for you to practice on. I've picked a radical and a rational expression. So I want you to pause the video, determine whether each of these is a function, and then find the domain in the range. Do it yourself before you watch the answers. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and look at these together. So in the first one we have y equals square root of 4x plus 1. And the first question is, is this a function? And the answer is yes, this is a function. Because any x we plug in is only going to allow us to calculate one y value. And then the next thing we want to do is determine the domain. Now remember, we can't allow x to be anything that would give us a negative under the radical because the square root of a negative is imaginary and that would not be a valid y value. So we have to make sure that 4x plus 1 stays either greater than or equal to 0. And if you solve that little inequality, you find out that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1 fourth. If you graph that on a number line, this is what it looks like. It's all the numbers to the right of negative 1 fourth, and you do need that bracket. Because if x is negative 1 fourth, then you get a 0 under the radical, and the square root of 0 is 0. So that's fine. So we want to allow x to be negative 1 fourth and any number that's greater than that. So the domain is bracket negative 1 fourth to infinity. Now for the range, remember that any larger x I plug in is going to give me a larger y value. If I pick a bigger x, I get a bigger y value. And so I can make y as large as I want by plugging in an appropriate x, but the smallest that we can make y is 0 because the smallest x we can plug in is negative 1 fourth, and that's going to give us 0 under the radical, and the square root of 0 is 0. So the range is going to be from 0 to infinity. And then on the second example, we have y equals negative 7 over x minus 5. Now this is a function, because each x you plug in is only going to let you calculate one answer for y.
And now we want to think about the domain. Well, the domain is all the numbers except any number that would cause this denominator to equal zero. So we can't let the denominator equal zero, and that means we can't let x equal five. We just have to leave five out of the domain. And so in English words, the domain is all the numbers except five. On a number line, it looks like this. We get the interval to the left of five and the interval to the right of five. So in interval notation, we would say that the domain is from negative infinity to five parentheses union five to infinity. So notice the parentheses here because if you use the brackets, you'll be including the five and we are specifically trying to leave out the five. All right, now the range, we're gonna use the same trick we used last time. There's no variable in the numerator here. So there's no way for us to plug in anything for x that will give us zero in the numerator, and therefore there's no way for us to plug in anything for x that will cause this whole expression to equal zero. So y cannot equal zero. But now I want to make sure you understand that y can equal literally any other number besides zero, depending on what we plug in for x. So just imagine with me if we plugged in 4.999 for x, then 4.999 minus 5 would give us negative 0.001 in the denominator. And you can try this on your calculator. Negative 7 divided by negative 0.001 would be positive 7,000. And if I plug in 5.001 for x, then I'll get positive 0.001 in the denominator. And negative seven divided by positive 0.001 would be negative 7,000. So by choosing numbers that are very close to five, we can make the value of this expression on the right very, very large. On the other hand, by choosing numbers that are very far away from five, we can make the denominator a very large number and negative seven divided by a large number would be very small. So we can get literally any number in the world here except zero, and remember we can't get zero because the top doesn't contain a variable. So the range of this expression is, again, all numbers except zero, and the way we write that in interval notation is negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity, and we make sure we use the parentheses, not the brackets.